This is one of the questions that we get quite a lot at the shop. Dude, that's a big brown bro. How do you know what flies to tie on? If they're lakes or rivers that you fished a lot, you probably know what flies use or what specifically what bugs the fish are eating or what sort of bait fish they may be chasing. But if you get to a new water or you're just kind of trying to learn and maybe branch out with the different types of bugs, different types of aquatic insects, bugs that are living in the water and hatch or some that are in the water all the time, or even insects that crawl around the edges, live in the trees and the bushes that might fall in and get eaten by trout. So what we're gonna do today is kind of break down what you do to kind of figure out what the fish are feeding on or what they could be feeding on if you really get there and you just have zero clue of what's going on. We're on a little stream high up in the mountains. This stream has a lot of insect life and it's one that you could, depending on the day of the year, you could find midges, you could find caddis, you could find blue-winged olive mayflies, PMDs, drakes, golden stones, salmon flies, pretty much every insect ever invented. All right, when you're wondering what the fish are eating, one of the ways to do it is to get a throat sample. We know what this fish ate because it ate a Frenchie, but you don't always know what else they're going to eat. So first thing you can do is keep the fish wet, get your hand wet, and then squeeze the bulb of the pump several times so you get all the air out of it. So now I've just got water in it. It's full, the bulb is full of water. Now I'm going to squirt out about half of the bulb of water. And I'm going to whip my hand. I find it easiest to turn the fish upside down. They tend to hold still a little bit better when they're upside down. Gently slide the throat pump in until you meet a little resistance. Squeeze the rest of the water in and then slowly extract it, hoping that you see little bugs like that go in. Oh. There it goes. We released the fish real quickly. Now we've got the uh, mother load of what was in his throat. We've got some mayflies, it looks like. Some beta snimps. Beta snimps. So if you were in a river that you just didn't know and you wanted to take them back and maybe tie some flies out of it, you can store them in some vials or something. We'll show you here in a bit. All right, we've got another fish here to pump. This one's a cut. First, keep the fish in the water. I'm gonna fill the pump full of water. Then I'm gonna squeeze about half of it out. I'm gonna wet my hand. I'm going to invert the fish, those beautiful cutty slashes. Stick the pump in until it meets a little bit of resistance. Squeeze the rest of the water out. Suck it in. Then we're gonna carefully release the fish. By the way, we don't recommend doing this to every fish you catch. In fact, we wouldn't recommend doing it to very many, maybe one or two per day max, just to see what's going on. Beta nymph. Ooh, free living caddis, which is what I caught my, that fish on. That fish ate a GTI caddis, which my fly was quite a bit larger than that one, but there's another free living caddis. There's some ants. Another beta nymph, another caddis, and another beta nymph. It's a real wonder that fish ate a GTI. It's half of its belly is full of caddis. More beta, 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 beta adult. Betas adults, more betas. Betas adults. You can see a little bit of a pattern there, caddis or betas, maybe an ant, all good choices. Okay, we're at the river's edge. Fish are in the river. How do I know what they're eating? First thing you can do is look and see, what are they eating? If you can't see that they're eating anything, back to the drawing board. So there's kind of three things that you can do here. We can look around the edges of the stream and see that there could be ants, there could be beetles, uh, cicadas. And then the other thing you can do is pick up rocks or overturn rocks. So we're just gonna grab a rock that's got some stuff underneath it. And this one has some caddis, some mayflies. We're gonna keep looking. So on this one, you see all these little twig looking things. These are caddis and they're cased caddis is what they're called and if you squeeze them they will squeeze out a little larva looking thing. This rock has a few more goodies. Big one on here is this nice drake. It's a mayfly nymph. 
And then right next to him is another little betus nymph. And then you can see a bunch of caddis. So the drake, again, you may not know what it is. You could look up mayfly pictures. And as you'll find out, will eventually hatch and become a, an adult mayfly. So here's an example of a bug we just pulled up. You don't have to know what this bug is necessarily. You could grab a little entomology book like the one in the kit I'll show you in a minute or look on the internet for some pictures. Worst case, you go to a fly shop or you go online and you look at flies that may look kind of like that. So you don't necessarily have to know that that is a crane fly larva. All right, so if you turn over rocks and you're not seeing what you want, another way to catch insects that are actually naturally in the current or that are maybe in the dirt, you don't, you're not picking them up on rocks, is to get a seine. Again, this will be in the entomology kit that I'll talk about in a little bit. We've recruited Brig to be the kicker, and I'm gonna be the catcher, and we're gonna get some bugs. Okay, once the seining is done, you got a seine that looks like this, and it's gonna have a bunch of crud in it. So what I normally do, is I'll just hold it here, and then when you see something wiggling, you can pick it off. I'm going back to my handy entomology kit. I've got some tweezers, and so when I see a little bug that needs to be grabbed, there's a little mayfly nymph, I can grab him, and then I can go ahead and stick him in my vial, or if I want to keep a sample, you don't have to, and that'll give you a little bit better idea of what the trout are potentially gonna be feeding on, or at least what's in the water. Okay, so, Obviously, a quick YouTube video like this is not going to tell you everything you need to know about uh, aquatic insects and entomology. However, there's lots of resources online that can show you some of the things that you may potentially find in a tailwater, in a freestone stream, um, depending where you're going to be fishing. So the idea is to find kind of the bugs that may be there and maybe the time of year and what insect life cycle will be there. I've mentioned uh, previously this little entomology kit. We have these on our website. The link will be below in the description. It's a nice little kit. It comes with all the stuff that you need to collect all the bugs that you want, um, including this hatch matching little book. It has like illustrated drawings of what the bugs are, but uh, certainly it's a start. It just kind of walks you through the main bugs that you're gonna see. What you get with this is you get this same, which is a collapsible, same. These arms can collapse down. This folds up and you stick it right in the, the case here. It comes with a stream thermometer. It's always a good idea if you see bugs hatching, take the temperature of the stream because very often the stream temperature will coincide with when bugs hatch. Showed you earlier, it comes with this little specimen jar. You can store some things in. It's more of a temporary holding bin for your insects that you gather. Again, you're looking to kind of get an idea of what these bugs are. You may not be keeping them, but if you do want to keep them, it comes with these vials. The only thing you would need besides these vials is a uh, bug embalmer, which also will be in that link below, uh, which is a solution that you can put and, re and preserve your bugs in if you want to do that. It also comes with these tweezers, which come in handy if you want to be grabbing the bugs, swishing them around, you want to pick some out for yourself to eat. Um, and it all comes in this handy little case. Bug nerds or not, it's always a good idea to know what the fish are possibly feeding on when you're on the stream. So link below, entomology kit, some of the other doodads that you may want to use to collect insects stream side. Uh, give it a try and check us out on flyfishfood.com and subscribe.